fucking daylight here. There you go. Yeah, I think. You want to know what time it is? Really? I, you split. I think like around three at the very oh, late, yeah. at the very latest though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you have time. Okay, let's try again. Starting again. Hello R- again. Round two. Hello again. <laughs> we had to start again. We Sorry. had a false start. Lesson learned again. <laughs> yeah. I'm still. We learned that we're shitty at podcasting. <laughs> well, I'm very know. shitty at podcasting. I don't. <laughs> we didn't know what to connect what where. You That's don't true. Know is yeah. Rudy just took a fat tab of acid. <laughs> so we're basically gonna watch him for 20 minutes to see what happens. So yeah, this is a YouTube how to watch uh, how to watch Hispanics in California on acid. It's fucking at the title sells itself. Yeah. What do we call things. it? A tamale hatchet. Tamale hatchet. The actual lizard records tamale hatchet podcast. That's, a, that's not too long, is it? The actual lizard <laughs> records tamale hatchet. Astral lizard records is too long. Tamale Re- hatchet Astral podcast records. is good. Astral lizard records is the fucking worst name ever. It should be ALR. Yeah. Podcast. So is Wild Pack of Canaries. No, I'm actually, Canaries that's kind of cool. cool. It kind of, yeah, it kind of induces. I pretty, I hated that name so much. Always. So Sister yeah. Crowley. Yeah. yeah, I hate that name too. Yeah, I think generally bands like stupid. regret their bad name like a week after they gave themselves that bad name. Yeah, of course. It's so yeah. hard. Like I regret my mom so giving me my name because now I have to use it as a band name. <laughs> so you yeah. double hate your, you hate <laughs> your own name. That took the easy way out. <laughs> We could have been, what if, if we were like Crosby, Stills, and Nash, we would have been what? Killing Lindemeyer, uh, uh, Crocker, and Esser? <laughs> yeah. It's not. We'd be like. Crosby, the, Stills, and Nash has a ring to it, though, or maybe just because it's been cultured into, you know, like we grew no, up with but it. Crosby, Stills, and Nash, it's like, right, phonetically and like. Yeah, the, they just got lucky because right. it rolls off the tongue, you know? Yeah. Then, like, you that's know, how nicknames yeah. are born, you know? Yeah. It has to roll off the tongue. Yeah. Do you have any nicknames growing up? Um, n- well, honestly, it's Rudy because my real name is Rodolfo. Yeah. So, oh, okay. So, like, since I was like two, like, my aunt started calling me Rudy, and so the rest of my family just started calling me Rudy. Rudy's then, a cool name. But then you hear about, like, you know, you go to school and you hear everything, you know, Rudy Tootie, like, Rudy all oh, kinds of shit. Fresh and fruity. Uh, everything under the sun, <laughs> That's you know. The, I've yeah. heard of all, like, my favorite is Prudence, <laughs> though. Uh, Prudence? Prudence? Yeah, I like that one. Like, it reminds me of the Dear Prudence from the Beatles. Like, yeah. Rudy, Prudent, like, Prudy, Prudence? Yeah, people... Like, people or, called you Prudence? Or, or, or a common one is, like, Rudy Rudes or Rudes. Rudes is a pretty common one. Uh, Rudy Rowdy Piper? Or, uh, I like Fast... <laughs> uh, I like Fast <laughs> Rudy. About? Someone's called me Fast Rudy before. Fast I, I, cool. Like, it's kind of, like... Like disrespectful towards me, but it's such a good yeah. nickname. Yeah. That's really cool. Why? It, well, it's like you know, you don't like yeah. your slick. Smooth, no, no, like you know, it implies like that you uh, are just kind of uh, promiscuous sexually. Oh, like, oh. that's okay. what. It, that's how. That's what I yeah. infer from it. But <laughs> I can't wait to. Yeah. But I it's mean, just a good yeah. nickname. So regardless of what it might imply, like it's a good nickname. Mine's Brent. There's no <laughs> fast Brent. asshole. Fast Brent. Yeah, fast that was my nickname. Asshole Brent. My nickname growing up was, a- was asshole. Usually. Or dickhead or yeah, something. Yeah, d- there was that. I thought my, I thought my, yeah, I thought my name was like my mom was. I thought my name was asshole my entire life. Yeah. <laughs> hey uh, asshole! Every time I heard that, I go what? Or like a nincom- nincompoop. Nincompoop. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Nincompoop. Or uh, uh, fish brains. I don't know. <laughs> We get we call each other dummy a lot. Like dummy is like a, you hear yeah. dummy around here a lot. That's a good one. Like, like hey like, dummy. Dummy. That's a very eighties nineties. We're yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're from the eighties nineties. Uh, I am well, kind of yeah. I was born in eighty eight. Okay. So oh, sort, okay. Of, sort of there. So you and Jared yeah. are about. To, I'm a little bit older than you and Jared. I mean, you were born in. I'm gonna give you my Hollywood 45? age. Yeah. What's your Hollywood age? My Hollywood age. I was born ninety two. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was born eighty. Okay, so I'm 36. Edit. Well, like, beep. Yeah. <laughs> I was born in beep. <laughs> well, like, to give you Six perspective, my mom was born in 69. So she was 18 so when I she had your the, dad. Yeah, potentially. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Potentially. We're 11 years apart. That's yeah. not We too, always that's talk not about that. this that, we, do, that a, we shouldn't talk about age because it's so, so prevalent. And then yeah. you're like, I'm fucking old. What am I going to do? Don't run from it. Yeah. What yeah, am I going to do? Age ain't nothing but a number. Yeah, That's for sure. True. And then I'm going to look at this video and hear myself say 36 and see my posture and go, oh, God. As many uh, <laughs> 90s R&B references I can make on this podcast. You know I what know I listen... You want to know the... I, this isn't R&B at all, but I know that, um, I know that I'm like... 
I guess would I would because. Would we be '90s kids, kind of? Because we were kids in the '90s. Yeah. So okay. We're, so as like a '90s kid. I would say kid. we're totally '90s kids. Okay. Yeah, like before the internet, you know, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The last breed. Just like. When when was the internet officially born? Silver chair. Uh, silver, silver chair. chair. <laughs> Holy shit, dude! Um, I just saw like an article that said like, uh, it was a couple years ago. That it was like these the older net, the internet is older than these kids. Like it was the first generation of college kids going. That were younger than the internet. So the internet, I, I remember the internet being. I like, took the internet drinking once. We got <laughs> fucked up in like, like Denver when they just turned twenty one. I take the internet. I take the internet on a date every night. Oh, oh fuck! Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> My two thousand dollar porn machine. Um, I have the Jeez. tissue right there. I, <laughs> yeah, I did bring Wash some tissue for this episode. Everybody's got just, gifts, man. Just in case, you know, you never know. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> what is wrong? I, with th- you? I thought you said everybody has <laughs> gifts, like GIFs. Yeah. Like I have. I probably have some. I got a gift. Like weird, like Tumblr gifts of some girl, like getting. Probably it just happens, yeah. you know. Like you just download weird shit sometimes. And yeah, send it to your buddies. Yeah, he sends me weird shit all the time. Yeah. I just think it's. Funny. I've actually. This sounds such so pretentious. I ha- I've actually cooled it. I've tried to cool it on my phone and like internet as much as I can lately. Weird. I don't like, like some like general? like having like I'm trying to kill the automatic response like when I'm bored or or like oh, yeah, to yeah. have like the knee jerk like pull my phone out and, and look at my phone all the that's time. That's amazing actually cuz I try to do that or like if I go get a cup of coffee in the morning I'll just leave my phone at the house or right. like turn it off or yeah man it's really important to not ha- like you said that automatic response like everyone it's kind of like a like a defense mechanism when you're out in social scenarios by yourself too. Yeah. Or like I notice, you know, if people don't want to make eye contact or say hello. They'll just like be looking at their phone instead. It's like the totally. perfect way not to. Have it's to the perfect way to disengage from I know, like what's I, going on. Around I walk you. around with like earphones in all the time. Yeah. Like, so you, not so you can't even sometimes engage me. Yeah. I the I am very engaged by you right now. <laughs> you. You're yeah, not wearing you. earphones right now. There's no cell phones right now. There's no cell phones. And there's a lot of tissue. There right. is a lot of tissue. Lot of tissue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you started that. I, I started really that. that one I can't wait for this meme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't wait for that. Yeah. Um, so, I'm gonna edit that shit out. It's it, it's for me. It was it was like a it was like ba- I was getting pretty bad about it. Where like you're sitting on your couch at home and like the TV's on, your laptop is in front of you, and you're like. Picking it like it was becoming like weird. I mean, not I know weird, exactly but what I, you mean like I, the impulse to. I know exactly what you mean. It's like, this impulse thing where, but like, because we know, like, we have the experience from the past that we knew a time before that, so right, we could still appreciate that, or like, we know how important it is to make sure, like, you just live your life instead of like looking at a screen. It's it's true. Yeah. yeah. Also, I find myself. I don't know if you guys do this, but I find myself. It's really easy for me. I'm. I've always been like a very comparative thinker. So like, the internet is like this sort of false or like Facebook or or Instagram or whatever. Like you see your friends and they're playing in front of a sold out room or they're standing in front of a waterfall or like I find myself going like. Man, everybody else has such a like a good life. So I fi- I have I have like a bit of a comparative thing, it, which is you know depressing. It's, but yeah. it's created like this like the fear of missing out complex. For totally, people. yeah, for people. For sure. totally. Because everyone's like, well, I want to be there. I want to be hanging out. It looks. Why didn't I get invited? You know, it's yeah. like, or how did I not know about this show or this party or whatever? Right. And so it kind of creates this weird anxiety that was non-existent 20 years ago. Which, in reality, a lot of these even situations 10 years ago, you know? that you even see aren't even that interesting. Right. right. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I mean, like, we use it for our promo- like, we, even for our promotion, we use it. You can doctor up an image to be like, you fucking missed out. Look at this yeah. part. Look at the show we, we threw. It's... Well, or it's and just, it's just the part angle. of marketing. Like, yeah. well, here's tw- yeah. This whole side of the room is empty, right. and there's this shit going on, yeah. and you snap the photo of this, and then right. put it on the internet, and everyone's like, oh. I've seen that happen. Um, I've seen labels do that at their shows before and you you were at the show and you totally saw like the the <laughs> lack people. of the lack of the crowd yeah. and 
Yeah. And then you see the picture online, paints a different picture. I'm good. If I just fucking Photoshop people in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, like uh, it turns into a Coliseum. Yeah, it turns yeah. into a collage at a certain point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you start seeing like the same person. Like, like how is like how is Muhammad like, Ali at the yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. Why is, yeah. You see like a, you why see does this like, look that like dead? Why, why does this look like Sergeant Pepper's album yeah. cover? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Paul yeah. McCartney came to our fucking show. Can you believe it? Yeah. Yeah, like Midnight Mass. You guys photoshopped Tyler the Creator in there, right? For sure. He was not there. He was photoshopped. He's for sure. Was yeah. Absolutely, one hundred percent photoshopped there. A, uh, fucking hoodie over his face, like yeah. like that. Because that's how originally how he was when he walked in. He's like, "Don't fuck with me, don't fuck with me." He was cool. I talked to him he for really a second. Nice, yeah. You know, he did something that I've only seen like very rich people do, which is uh, everybody was starting to kind of circulate him, and there was uh, I, he was talking to somebody like one of his friends was there. And he would, and people were like going like, "Oh, Tyler, blah blah blah. Oh, can I take yeah. a picture of you?" And he wouldn't br- like he was only engaged in the conversation with the person that he was talking to. He would not, even if you fucking tapped on his shoulder or something, he wouldn't break it. Like, Which he is was cool. Like, you won't yeah. disrupt what I'm already doing. Like, yeah. It was. I mean, I'm sure if you have a million people. And yeah, you're desensitized you at that point. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. used to that kind of interaction with people, and right, like you just really just. Like he was focused, he was not worried about it. Yeah, yeah but you boundary. can't take that the wrong way, really. Yeah. I, no, no, like, absolutely not. I always feel like if you're not gonna let something like, like, let's say I was standing next to you know freaking Barack Obama, like as much as I would like to talk to him, I mean, if the conversation didn't happen organically or who, like, don't force it. Like, yeah, just sit there and yeah. eat a sandwich next to each other in silence, and it's every everything's gonna sure. be fine. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna yeah. be I, the same That's thing. my move when I for celebrities. I don't fucking. I like. I yeah, I don't talk to them at all. I sat I, next. No, they don't want to be bothered. I sat next to Matt Groening eating oh, din- yeah. dinner in San cool. Francisco at this like Thai food place once, and you know, who? What kind of asshole would I be? Like he was sitting with his parents. Like, yeah. why would I disrupt their meal? Like. I have no reason to. I would have said, put me in the Simpsons. Like, <laughs> yeah. Picture, I just, like, like, I'm sitting with my own friend. I'll engage my friend, you know? <laughs> right, right. That's I, actually I pretty sick, Sh- though. I saw <laughs> that's, like, kind of cool. The, I saw Shaq one time at a pizza place in LA, and I looked over at him, and he was, like, the same height I am standing. He was sitting, but we're, like, the same height almost. I was standing Jesus. up. I looked at him, and he just went, like, don't fuck with me. You know? No. What's that genie? The genie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look like. Please don't come over here. Yeah. What's yeah. the genie movie that he's? Oh, uh, Shazam. Shazam. You should have been like Shazam. Oh, Shazam. Uh, man. Shazam like, was the worst. Hammer. Movie he was in a movie called Hammer too. He would have Shazammed your ass out of that <laughs> yeah, uh, pizza yeah. place. Yeah. <laughs> he would have. Yeah. I was like, I love that movie. I'm not making fun of you, Shaq. Shazam was sick. Shut <laughs> up. Yeah. But if Shaq was here, you would be talking like I this. Know. You would be having a podcast with you. What? <laughs> and you'd be getting pissed off. Sh- Shaquille so O'Neal. you're playing tonight. Oh. You're playing shit. Plugs. Uh, yeah. Um, plugs. Let's get the plugs let's, in. Let's get the plugs out of there. Hey, who's got we're gonna the do plug? a segment called. We're gonna look on our phones. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Boop. Let's do. Let's do a segment. Yeah, drop that in. No, I was gonna Google do- search Rudy's itinerary. Rudy's fucking. Let's course, Google. Let's Google schedule. search. Uh, most commonly asked music questions. <laughs> okay, this is the this most is commonly the, asked music questions. The foundations segment. to yeah. a successful podcast. This is yeah. Absolutely yeah. Records hot. T- um, uh, what? T- yeah. Um, shit. Google search. This is really. St- Strange, but Wild Pack of Canaries, my old band's playing tonight. Cause oh, we're, that's right. We're doing a fundraiser for one of our old beloved venues in town, Kesara. So Kesara, we haven't done Kesara. this in like 16 months, and I hope we don't do it for another 18 months. But oh, really? But no, not in a bad way. We all still friends and hang out, but it's very much just like a fun night, and it's going to be very nostalgic. And it's cool because we're playing with like younger, more up and coming Long Beach bands. So it's great to like get that going. I had someone come up to me yesterday saying how a lot of the new blood of Long Beach never really got a chance to see Wild Pack. Nice. So a lot of people are kind of excited for that. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And yeah, you texted me a while ago and said that you weren't, you were maybe under a radius clause or something and you were like, I can still do a wild pack show, and I thought that might be pretty interesting. Yeah, I mean, mm. every once in a while we we can throw that that card out there. What about the band? Is it the same band? That, I mean, is it the same members? Yeah, I mean, I mean, originally, like two thousand eight, it was a uh, me, Drew Pearson, who is in Twin Steps and Golden Drugs now, Alfred and JP, 
and I definitely went through a variety of switches, but and like lineup changes. But in the end, it was uh, it, we were like, like a it grew. It was me, Alfred, JP, Miguel, Vasquez, Matisse, London, Guzman, Aaron Archambault, Darian from Houston. There was just like got re- like we were just became a a flurry of people. Yeah. So it just kind of outgrew itself, and then. But it was always you who were the like the primary songwriter. I I wrote most of the material on the first two records, and the you know uh, I felt like on the third record it definitely became like just like we are a band, and this is all of us. Like yeah, in the room together, like yeah. writing stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, that can be fun. And that and can it, be. It's a definitive shift. Yeah, it was. It's, yeah. And I was okay with it. And I you know I just identified with just being a member of the band at that point instead of it being my band. And then, then you said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna be really down." <laughs> yeah. No, actually, I felt I felt like I was the last one to kind of give up on the dream of Wild Pack, like in like in the sense that I really thought that was gonna be like my band that took me so, somewhere. But yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we did a good job. Like I felt like yeah. we toured in Den, but we went to Denver, Austin. Like we did as much as we could with like the most DIY like support you can ima- possibly think of, which is basically zero. So yeah. yeah, so we did it all ourselves, and I feel like for not having press campaigns behind us and all this stuff, like not bad, you know. But everyone it, started moving into other projects, and I felt like I was the last one to kind of like accept the fact that it was a defunct project. And once I, you know, that old saying like you close one door and another one opens, and that's exactly what happened, because Ike hit me up, Ike Owens hit me up to do yeah. an EP and. It just snowballed from there. That's it. And yeah, so it's different now, I imagine, because you as a solo musician, I mean, not so, I mean, Rudy is a group of this, I mean, Rudy is a band. Yeah, but it's, I mean. But it's you. For people that, you know, like are aware of us, I say us, you know, like, because definitely know, like they know that um, I have a a little crew of very solid musicians that I uh, like to keep tight and it's always usually the same people for that reason. Yeah. And, you know, we we definitely stray away from just having random members and I'm very grateful to have everyone who's played with me and I've had a couple of drummers, but right now it's Alfred Hernandez and uh, Lily. He's amazing. Yeah, he's really, and you guys are, He's and so is pretty, Lily. It, besides that, it's pretty much been the same people. Like you guys have been together. Now. I've played with Alfred for sixteen years. Jesus, that's a long time. Um, since we were in middle school, um, and then Lily's the only original member of this project, which is amazing. And uh, she was there from day one, and she was our bass player, and she's still there now. I, she's amazing. I watched. Yeah. I watched. Uh, we that show we did. At, you say it's good. Uh, I was just kind of behind her watching her play. I was like, God damn, she's good. Yes, it's she's really? only twenty two, and I think she can take over the world she if she wants to. Yeah, <laughs> but I was gonna say, so it's kind of like you've seen the evolution because, it, especially because we were talking about before we started rolling, um, how uh, Wild Pack kind of parlayed into Porch Party, right? So you you shifted into Porch Party, which then. It was like, uh, like Brent always says, one hand washes the other kind of thing. Like right. Wild Pack and Porch Party. We kind of scratched each other's backs. Yeah. Because right when Porch Party started, they put out the Joel Jasper record. And I felt like we already had a bunch of vinyls just sitting there. So I told Casey, like, put us on. And I felt like we'll give you guys, like, some Long Beach instant street cred. Mm-hmm. Like, if you do that, and, like, it's going to help us put our stuff online. And we just kind of just joined forces and I feel like that's kind of like the attitude in Long Beach is why we're sitting here right now is because we all just kind of join forces instead of disconnect like that's what's making this scene really good and yeah it's really cool I think so too I think I think, so too, yeah. I think that is a that that that's interesting that you touched down on that because that everything that I think that is good I'm I'm narrow-minded but I think that everything that I appreciate and think is good about Long Beach and people have asked us and I'm sure they ask you like what's going on with Long Beach I do th- I think it does have this weird um, everybody is kind of overlapping with each other but we're all helping each other out kind of in this yeah it's like very communal way mm-hmm. and definitely I would definitely agree with everyone's like it's not like this weird competitiveness because uh, music is and art is never a, a competitive thing, no right. matter how y- you want to put it. 
performing it, I you know we can talk about that some other time. Like that is definitely some competitiveness there. Like sure, you, in yeah. I like to break it down like it's like a break dancing competition. Like a you want to break with the best break dancers. So then you're in a circle. Someone just does some crazy moves, and then it's your turn. What are you gonna do? Like you got to step up and push yourself. That's how I like to look at that. But um yeah, for sure. But as far as like a making art it's for you it's not for anybody else and you sh you know i'm just repeating josh holmes words verbatim that like don't expect anything out of it just do it for yourself so that's yeah very true yeah yeah i mean especially in the climate where the, the like how music is today it's like i could understand like more like it's porch party and everybody else in long beach like being competitive it is not a good idea even if you you know what i mean you it would just dividing everybody is not right. good for you know, there's, there's not so much to gain financially as there was years ago. Like I'm gonna get this artist and I'm gonna blah blah. Right, because that's like on a negative side of things. But yeah. if you like, just instead of focusing on what you don't like or the bands you don't like or the labels you don't like, okay. But focus on the bands you do like and the labels you you do like. So yeah. then support them and you know don't feel any jealousy or en envy because that's never gonna. It's just never gonna take you anywhere good. I've, For sure. Like I'm. Um, and uh, if you the haterade is cool, it's <laughs> like um, I I like that it's genuine. It's genuine, like genuinely fuel. Like I see it as fuel to anyone's fire. Like he asks the trap rappers in Atlanta, like if you're not doing it right, if you don't have haters, so yeah, you must be That's doing something. Yeah. You yeah. must be doing something good. Yeah. But anyways, like likes I, you? <laughs> no, it's like you're not doing it right. You don't have haters. I'm like. Fucking but I just talked money. about them for like 30 <laughs> seconds and that's about as much time as they deserve. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's it's been an interesting I think um I really I mean I am I don't have anything important to say. I was going to say <laughs> I really I really like uh I don't want to live anywhere else. I lived in Texas for a long time and I people have talked to us a lot about you know, like why Long Beach of all places right. when you live so close to LA and why everything. Not Highland Park. Why not? You know, Silver Lake or something. Yeah. Like that. And I always think like, I like, I, I love Long Beach. Um, when I was on, I toured out here from Texas um, at one point and I hadn't spent that much time here. And I think I played at Fourth Street Vine or something. And uh, I thought if I, if I move back from Texas back to California, which is where I'm from, um, I would only live in Long Beach and I've lived here for a long time now, but yeah, it's like this, like best kept secret that keeps like kind of overgrowing itself and like, it, it's gonna, it's already exploding a it's little bit, explode. but yeah, but you know what? It's always important to like seek, like for me, I'm from here, but I want to be elsewhere too. Like it's always important to like not get trapped here. And right. I right. And I right. think. Sure. Like you guys coming in from the outside and helping cultivate the city, that's uh, that's important and it's great. But yeah. someone like me who like grew up here, it's important for me to take that Out. and like show people, showcase. Yeah. To me, I feel like my job is to make sure to not get trapped in the bubble of Long Beach, but sh go like freaking Montreal and wherever, like, and well, and, sh not? and show yeah. and showcase what we are doing, but elsewhere. And I feel a real big sense of pride. And that, like, um, when we played Noise Pop Festival last year, us and Vince Staples were the only Long Beach bands on that mm -hmm. entire bill. And, like, it's insane pride. Like, that's where I feel good about being from Long Beach. Not because I would be playing, like, at some, like, dive bar. Like, to me, that's not... Right. That's not culture building, you know? Like, mm -hmm. so... It's taking it out and... Yeah. yeah but, every, you know, everyone has to earn their stripes and play shitty dive bars, and we did that. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know... I encourage everyone to get dirty and get play all the <laughs> weirdest, yeah. craziest shows you could possibly think of. I mean, we played in a gas station before, what? like That's after great. hours, because the prospector we were too young to play, so they didn't let us play. So we decided to set up across the street at a gas station. Was that in Long Beach? And across the street from the prospector, mm -hmm. and uh, we set up the drums on the bed of a truck, and we found electrical, you know power and we just played and all these people came out and started skating and drinking 40s and people were pouring so. out from the prospector and it got back to a bunch of like musicians that i admire back back in la and everyone heard about it it was just so anyways just just go get weird you know like just do 
impromptu shows or I don't know. I feel like when you're growing up, like that's where you're really building your experience, your life experiences, and you get to all the stories that you can tell later, like being in Austin and we're sleeping on the roof of the van. And it's, you know, mm-hmm. like, stuff like, stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, like, the fun stuff. That's stuff you look back at. It's you character know, so building, gl- you know? And yeah. it's, I'm like, so I did that. and then you'll realize, hey, is this for me or not for me? Like, yeah, right, right, some right. people You're just, either born for it yeah, or you're not. Some people right. don't really like to tour. And that's okay. Maybe they're just good at, like, making songs at, at their house. And they make amazing songs at their house. But that doesn't mean they want to s- drive around in a van all over the country with a bunch of sweaty people. Like, it's just... Not for everyone. Sleeping on people's floors. I personally enjoy being mm. a vagabond and running around. Yeah, me too. So it's like, it's great for me. It's like, it's work. healing for me. But like, I don't know. It just, it just depends. I've done it. I did it. I have done it my whole life. I've basically done it since I was 18. Like right out of high school, I went on tour full, same, full same, time. Same. Well, not full time, but yeah, like at least twice, three times a year. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was out. I mean, I was out most of the year for a long time. I was playing with terrible bands. It was fun back then, but it's, it's the sleeping on yeah. the floor and being but in you, a van and like like not having a place to stay. Like no going cell phone. You know, I didn't have an stay. iPhone on those tours. Like we used to yeah. fucking we used to weigh the van down and bring books and shit. I mean, we were just like, you know, or like the little home DVD players that you plug into the <laughs> and just watch whatever, or like Morse code. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was that was I mean you yeah. probably wore some like what movie what was like a tour I'm sure you wore like Tommy Boy out or some shit on tour there's always like <laughs> with your little DVD I feel, player I feel like uh, at the time maybe it was like Fight Club or something oh, so you just watch Fight Club over and over again I think you maybe. have to break it up when you're in the van too you like, gotta break it up like yeah. music and then okay some comedy. And then yeah. like a movie, and then everyone just shut the fuck up. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, nobody talk. You start to get fucking cabin fever. Like, <laughs> yeah, out. yeah. You gotta stop. Yeah, I'm generally one of the ones in a better mood during the tour, so I'm like the one trying to keep the mood light and joking around because you need that on the road. I you think. have to have that. Yeah, like, yeah. just like there's always someone that has their panties in a twist, you know, in the morning. About something. For sure. I know. <laughs> usually it's me. It's usually yeah. Brad. Yeah. And you wear blue panties, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're yeah. always twisted. <laughs> usually it's like, uh, and it has a big astro lizard right on the front, right on the on dickhead. Yeah. The tongue yeah. in the astro lizard is like it just it's like a little flap. Jesus Christ. This is on sale pizza. on their website, by the way. Yeah, buy, purchase this at astrolizard.com. <laughs> uh, you could Venmo them. Forward slash. <laughs> yeah. Twisted panties. I think we have some outstanding orders right now. I think we do too. Yeah, mine hasn't Don't come order in. Our shit. <laughs> mine has. I've ordered mine months ago. It's still not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, gotta go, I gotta walk about a hundred feet and put it in a box. Don't <laughs> order our shit. We won't send it. Brent won't. Brent won't send it, and then he'll get mad at me for not sending it. <laughs> I knew one yesterday. Uh, I was hit up yesterday to. Uh, people are gonna send us underwear and tank tops what? for free. Just. Oh, uh, I just thought that was gonna go totally different. No, like swag, like, you know, you yeah. get swag, but I've never gotten yeah. un- like fresh like packs of underwear. So nice. Cool. I can't wait to surprise the band. Like, hey, you ready for tour? Here's a, You're a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here's your. Uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you should put that on your rider. Do you send out riders? Do you have that um, going? Yeah, you know, it's not always honored, like, but. Yeah. We definitely have one, and there's always definitely a case of Topo Chico on there. Yeah. Uh, Estrella, damn beer. There's always cheese and cigarettes for JP. Um, cheese and cigarettes. cigarettes. He loves cheese that's trays. Weird. Like, that's his whole deal. And he loves, I mean, we're. Me too. T- pro tip if you have a rider, put cigarettes on there because. Come on, you're on tour. You don't want to pay That's for good, cigarettes. Yeah. Also, socks. And yeah. also... We get riders. It's always socks and it's always towels. There's like a few mainstays of a rider. Always socks. So it's, at first it's like weird, but then it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, you always need those fresh socks. Come Dude, yeah. if you, can't, you can dump socks off in different cities because you're getting new ones. Yeah. That's a, that's a great way to tour, you know? Yeah. Like... <laughs> like if you because you, you don't always the have next a time you tour, you should do rider with. I always do. I want to do. Well, I'm fucked up, but I always want to do like the stupidest shit and make people have to like find it. When I was I was on, on tour, with, I was for a little while for a little while. I was on tour with Yellow Card. Oh, so you had a bit of the bit of the the big time. Well, not really. Taste of the big time. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we went Hollywood out. Jarrett, we used to call him <laughs> at that time. <laughs> <We used to laughs> 
<laughs> we went out with yellow card for a little while, short period of time. And uh, they always asked for a puppy at their event to be waiting for them to play with at a venue every Did night. they actually have and one? And people in the venues brought puppies to the like this specific uh, breed or anything that's like that, fucking or? horrible i'm yeah. sorry <laughs> that, yeah. that's pretty, that's pretty brent said weird out. stuff that's, that's the weird. weirdest shit I've, that was the weirdest when i said one weird I've stuff i didn't mean like live animals i mean so like what happens to the puppy after the show like just goes back to the shelter or yeah shred it like, someone's yeah. <laughs> fuck Shut up. Toss it out the window. <laughs> we, yeah, I don't know. No, you put, someone, it, in t- you put it in the t-shirt can and you shoot it out in the audience. Well, there you go. Well, that's swag. Uh, swag. <laughs> swag. Yeah. Don't Puppy write, swag. Yeah. Y- I don't remember a PETA. Don't run. Don't they stamp YC on the. Don't email. Me. <laughs> please email. Don't him. send me any me? fucking fucking please email. <laughs> don't tread on me. <laughs> don't tread on me. <laughs> well, yeah. Um. So guys, <laughs> so you're playing case. Uh, you're playing case tonight with Wild Pack Canaries. No one's gonna. This is gonna probably air after that. So yeah, or maybe maybe we'll just put it on right it's after. It's an honorable mention. I don't yeah, know. but what's what's next? What's in yeah? Like, what's the going on with Rudy Band? Yeah. Um. Well, uh, for starters, we're going on like a March run of shows. I don't know if to call it a tour, but it's kind of like a tour. But it's a like like ten shows kind of bunched up together and. We are going to different states and even TJ, so that is kind of like a tour. Are you gonna do we, South by? Yeah, we're going to be at South by. Um, oh. Our main show is with Broncho. I don't know how to pronounce their name. Broncho, yeah. Bron- I saw yeah. that flyer. And um, Frankie Rose. Uh, it's a music taste good show, right? Right. Yeah. And then we're. I think we're gonna play with Yonatan Ga on Saturday oh, okay. at the Spider he's House. Your, you love Yonatan, don't he's, you? He's he, pretty red. He's my boy. Yeah, he. I he's one of the best musicians. Like if even if he wasn't my friend, I would be completely amazed by that band. But we just got lucky to uh, got introduced to each other, and we got set up with a show together because someone thought we would be a good fit. And ever since then, like just like listen to Yonatan Gott, please. That's the one of the best bands in this world right now. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, we're gonna be good. the first three. Um, shows of our tour with this band protistas from chile um they're an amazing band well known out there so we're doing the constellation room hi-hat and tj at the black box and tj with them and so i'm really happy about that because we re- really s- love making those connections with mexican south american spanish bands like last year when we played with heinz at echoplex that was pr- you know, that's exactly the kind of cross-cultural sh- shit that we need to be doing, especially because we sing in Spanish a lot. We'll be at South By, and then our homecoming show is with La Luz at Alex's Bar, uh, March 25th. So cruise, That'll be a good one. That'll be a good show. Cruise yeah, out to go. that. Um, yeah, as far as gigging, that's pr- I think that's really our focus right now, but we're finishing our record our new record right now and it's uh being mixed and we're very very excited to cut people's heads off with this thing it's good <laughs> yeah we, we, i'd love we to hear that. an exclusive track uh and it's good it's really good yeah don't call it a leak it won't be leaked yeah. it will not be leaked i had unless a tape recorder unless we were at the yeah. white house unless you put, put it on like a hard drive and leave it in the public bathroom and R- rudy Alex's. <laughs> Weeky leaks, Rudy leaks, Rudy know. leaks. We're gonna leak that shit. Yeah, yeah. Rudy leaks. Let's <laughs> call this podcast Rudy leaks. <laughs> uh, yeah, Rudy leaks is good. But um, I'm I'm being vague about this record. Uh, besides the fact that Johnny Bell has produced it and he, he's just completely murdered and shredded this project. But um, yeah, we can't really talk about it a lot right now, just because there's when when the time is to make like any sort of announcement. Black everything out like an FBI document. Yeah, yeah. 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 When the time comes, w- trust me, we will let people know. But for now, we just... Oh, the, you're going to know. For now, it's we toast. Drop. For now, we toast. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, sweet. Um, you looked at me like, is that it? <laughs> well, yeah. That's about, let's I think <laughs> this is it, boys. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I don't know. We've never done one, I, so we don't, I don't know how end long it. it goes. How do you end these things? I don't know. What does Mark Maron do? We have a guitar, you, uh, what does Mark Maron do? He says some jokes, probably. So, but like to end jokes. it, uh, uh, we set up a guitar. If you want to play it, if you don't, that's cool too. It doesn't matter. I mean, 
Oh, Most like that. common joke. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't matter. I put it out there just so I figured maybe you picked it up, but I, I didn't want to make it a thing. Right. No, it's nice guitar. It's sitting next to Hollywood Jarrett. Uh, yeah, Hollywood uh, Jarrett should play fucking a yellow card song. I wish that it, this yeah, whole I was here. podcast, I just sat and stared at my phone the whole time. I came here to come. hear a yellow card. We started, when we started, <laughs> I don't know. We, we pl- yeah, you should have. That's Ocean should be Avenue. What we, do. we just stared at our phones. We started talking about the podcast. Uh, we have harebrained ideas like we should do this we should do that we should do this but my so far i don't see a puppy <laughs> i know well i don't see a puppy i don't see a my case my ideas always <laughs> get knocked down because they're always fucking mean spirited and stuff like that so but i there's think there's nothing wrong with that uh, so but i think that, but this is i mean this is gonna be fun i think like we talked about earlier it's just a matter of bringing people that don't get to hang out all the time right uh, around to hang out and then bullshit and if anybody gives a shit they do or if they don't they don't yeah, I don't know if you guys give a shit or whatever you guys think is cool. Uh, Visca Barça, Visca Catalunya. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I was on my phone. I'm going to have to Google Translate that later. <laughs> yeah. <so. laughs> I was, I'm on my phone. Get out of your phone. What are you doing? I'm going to spend the rest of the interview on my phone. Did you just say you had a whole, like, you had a whole diatribe it's about a, you're going to not be on your phone ever again? <laughs> he's, protesting, he's protesting the podcast. I'm protesting <laughs> the tail end of the pop. Actually, I, ha- I have a work emergency. Are so you serious? I got to go. Jared's a doctor. I don't know if you knew that. No. Uh, I'm just kidding. Dr. Killens. I do have one. <laughs> Dr. Killens. I like that. Dr. Killens got to save a life. Dr. That would be crazy woman. if I was... <laughs> <laughs> That'd be crazy if I was a doctor. It would be crazy. I know you. It would be crazy. Yeah. Maybe shaky maybe hands. Doctor shaky you'd hand. Proctolo- killing. You'd probably be a proctologist. <sighs> Why? <laughs> that's the funniest of all doctors. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Well, yeah. shit. I think that's it. I think so, guys. Doctor yeah, Jarrett, we can just go have some bloody marys now. Let's go have some bloody marys. Okay. <laughs> Rudy Leaks. Rudy Dr. Leaks. Garrett. Check out Rudy. Uh, he's going to be on tour. We're not calling it a tour, but we're calling it a mini March extra- jaunt. Yeah, March. Uh, a flurry in March. March Madness. Yeah. yeah, March Madness. We'll get this out for that. Yeah. We'll get this out so, for that. So, pro- so first date is? First date is March 8th at the Constellation Room with Levitation Room and, wow. and Protistas. Last date is? Alex's Bar with La Luz. Correct. That's the one. And then all the all of them in between. Correct. We'll be in a one's fun is uh, El Paso. Uh, we think we're playing with Colin Green and the Memories, so that should oh, be pretty so fun. Yeah, that'll be good. Yeah, that'll be cool. fun. So and then new album info coming out later. We're yeah. not going to talk too much about it. It's, it's a, a very hush hush. Yeah, but it's going to be good. But we listened to a song and it's really sounds really good so far. Yeah, it's very cool. All right, Thank but we you. can't talk about it. Don't talk about it. Oh. <laughs> Actually, we we'll should bleep, we just, should beep out this whole. Yeah, section. maybe I'll just like overdub the song. It. Be, it I, I will throw a box at the back of your head. <laughs> I've seen that shit. It did yeah, not that look good. Like, that didn't look too nice. <laughs> we can't explain that. Yeah, that was. <laughs> but um, yeah. Thanks so much. Um, I love Astro Lizard Records Thank and you. Midnight Mass and it's cool shit. So keep listening, even though. You don't like my voice. <laughs> <laughs> They're not going to be complaining about your voice. Trust me. I've heard myself on the fucking microphone. All right. Peace. Cool.